it's Saturday morning. I'm going to skim this wall. First thing I need to do is remove any any lumps. I'm going to give it a, a coat of PVA all over. Get rid of any lumps that I've I've created. Make sure it's nice and flat. And I can get some plaster on. I'm only plastering down to down to work top height. I'm not going to do below. Same as the drywall it is if I'm going to PVA. Splash of that. I'm going to water this down. Just enough water to cover the wall. That'll go. Right, I've got about an inch and a half of cold water in there. Uh, PVA that, I let it sit for two minutes while I had a drink, had a cuppa. I've got multi finish there, I've got my big mix mixer, I've got a bucket, my dirty bucket, that's what I'll use for cleaning out, brushing my tools off. Clean water, you don't want any bits in that at all. I've got a bucket that I need to just give a rinse, just make sure that. There's no bits in there. My trowel, my flow. I've almost got the float on the back of my hand, not like that, like that, so you can scoop it up and spread up, if that makes any sense. Somebody in one of my other videos said that I should start at the top. I tried that the other week when I was plastering, but it didn't really work for me, so I'm going to do what I probably do.
Right, that's the first coat on. Radiator should have come off, but that's not my choice. That first coat filled up any imperfections, leveled it up a little bit. I'm going to put a second coat on, but before I do, I'm going to clean off this excess, any lumps. And this second coat should go on smoothly. I'll go around the top there, just make sure there's no bits that are going to get in the way. So same again, put another coat on top of this. Alright, that's the second coat on. And as I hoped, it's going off slower than that first coat. So what I'll do now is go around with a clean float. And I'll wash this off as I need to. Go around, get rid of the imperfections the worst of the imperfections get it somewhat like try not to create any more marks then I'll leave it to sit for five ten minutes or so if I have to I'll splash some water on it and float it off as flat as I can just at a thought as I'm doing this see every time you do that you leave another mark there so Get it as close as you can and then come back to it, leave it to dry for a little bit. And these floats, this is sharp, this will cut you if you're not careful and it's not straight. If you look down there it's slightly bent so as you're going across the tips on either end don't leave a line in the, in the plaster. You can buy these that are pre that are pre worn in. I don't know what the name is on there. Don't know it's worn off. But yeah you can buy them that are pre worn in. So if you buy a new cheap float, try running a, a file down the edge and sharpen the edge and you want it as smooth as possible. You don't want any little notches in it. So start off, if you start in the middle of something you'll leave a little dent, so start off and float in, so you start off and try and, f try and feather it off as you leave, as you leave the plaster. Now I've just got a bit to do up there and I'll leave it. And come back to it in 10 minutes splash some water on stop the float sticking do a bit more then before it dries completely I'll cut these out a little bit with the float because if you try breaking them out later there's a chance that you'll break you'll break a big lump out let it dry for a little bit and then you better just just chip it out a little bit. Same again as the socket, you see here, every time you do that, you leave another mark. So just gently, and then you can fill that in I'll come back to that in 10 minutes time have another go and it shouldn't leave so many dents each time it's a strange line down there don't know what it's about I'm ignoring it at the moment but at this point you want to try and make long sweeps and then before before I get carried away with too much of the wetting down on the next one I'll remove this throw that in the bin then 
bin full. But I left some plaster on here. Cleaned out my bucket. Left some on there. Just so that if I need a need a little bit, I can just dip into that. When you're doing these inside corners, just make sure your corner's okay. But you want to slide it forward a little bit as you put it on. You want to just slide it forward a little bit. Helps to stop ragging it out. You see I did a little bit there. Put a little bit of plaster on it. There, where you float it down, you catch it in the right light. Can see it. So go to one edge where you can start and float that in. And try and feather it off as you leave the plaster. And we'll leave that for ten minutes. Splash some water on it. Give it another float over. The water will stop the float sticking, and it also creates like a very fine cream that helps fill up any holes if you keep doing that keep going over with with water get it as flat as marble or as shiny as marble you don't really want that though see this has dried a bit while I've been talking so it's easier to get rid of the imperfections. See that's nearly there now. Let's go, Let's go back over there. That oh, one's still a bit wet. Right, final touches now. What I'm doing is splashing the wall with some water and then I'm floating I'm trying to float all the way to one edge, removing the water as I go. See, it leaves a paler colour plaster which will sink in. I'm not worried about here because it's tiled but you might be able to just see there's a bit of a hollow there. See, it fills up any little marks that you might have missed. You want to get that off. I've got, I've got one up here. Can you see around there? See, getting in but next to this wire is a bit awkward. But you see, if I go over it that way, you see there's a mark there. That's filled up with that thin cream plaster that's on the float. So I'll leave that, I'll come back to that, let it dry. I'll work my way all the way to the end, splashing water on, float it off. Cabinet's going to be covered here. But down here, splash some water on, try and feather it off, blend it in. Socket's looking pretty good at the moment. The plaster's getting harder so I can a bit of pressure on. So I just made a little mark there. See the line there? Just did that. There is a point where you have to just leave it alone. Yeah, so 
so that thin cream will fill up any little marks that you might have missed and I might give it once more but looking at the work in here see somebody's put the archetype back on but they haven't bothered to remove the paint Now I want to make long strokes and try and finish at a point where it's good. I know there's a cooker hood here so that's a good point to finish off. So I'll go back here. And then any marks that you leave will be hidden. start off and float it off I didn't bother putting a timber down there. Just forgot about it. Don't matter, I'll do it later. Alright, that's that. I was going to be fitting units next, but they want me to put the bathroom door on. So that'll be what I'll be doing Monday. Don't think I'll bother filming that because you've already seen these two go down. Same thing. These units I'll put back in place but there's a corner unit there with a post and they've decided looking at my Facebook pictures if you want to go online have a look in Facebook look up Gid Joiner I've got about 160 albums on there a lot of the albums show the progress of the work you know from the rough cut wood right through to the finish but my customers here had a look at that and they like the kitchen that I did railings grey fire and ball railings grey so I think I'm making either MDF or beach doors for this which means I need to make that corner post so before I can get that corner in which is pretty much the st start of this run I've got to do that and that means spraying ordering paint cutting doing all that first before I can even think about putting these units in so I'll get back to you as soon as I can